You know, Vinny Goodwill, I've never liked that old saying. Well, a series doesn't start until you you you, you win on somebody's uh, somebody wins on your floor. No, no, the series started. Um, there are five games left potentially, and this it started. It started. I watched it. I watched two games. So, this is what I want to know from you. Uh, Sacramento, not the same old Sacramento Kings. So that that storyline is out. The narrative of of Sacramento being overwhelmed by the big bad Warriors. Uh, Sacramento not being able to win a close game, uh, a close game. Uh, that narrative is out. They won two close games. They never been in the playoffs before. They might be wide eyed. No, no, no. So what they gonna say now? What what does it take for the Warriors to truly get back into a series against an opponent that I think is better, Benny? What do you say? I don't know if they're better. What I will say is they've dictated the terms of engagement for the first two games in this series. Like, I don't know the exact numbers, but doesn't it ha- give you guys the feel that Sacramento jumps ahead and Golden State is playing from behind? They're trying to catch their breath. They're trying to get the pace. Like, you can't dictate pace in a playoff game if you're playing from behind. You can't slow Sacramento down or force them to play a little bit faster than even they want to play if you are playing from five, seven, nine points behind all the time. Like Steve Kerr said, hey, all that that happened and we were still in a one-point game with three minutes left. Look at everything that had to happen to get you to that point. And sometimes you're so exhausted by the chase that you don't have anything left to close. Now for Sacramento, it's a matter of them being able to go on the road in a hostile environment and winning, but they have, I think, a 25-16 and record on the road. They're not inept. Like that defense, I don't think it's going to necessarily travel in the same way. But Golden State's decision making, both practical decision making and let's just shall we say, you know, aerodynamic decision making has been lacking <laughs> a lot. And I don't believe in the whole adage the series doesn't start until the you know the home team loses. I do believe in the adage everybody's got a plan until they get punched in the face or kicked in the <laughs> stomach. Yeah, that is so true, man. You mentioned in your latest uh, article that, you know, th- it looks like when you listen to a podcast that's at, at one and a half speed faster than what you're normally, you know, listening to. And that's what you see in the Sacramento Kings and what they're doing right now. So is it that you feel that their game plan is basically just punching Golden State in the mouth where it hurts, where they know that they can attack and they've been consistent in that? Or is it just the fact that Golden State's Continuous woes on the road has just trended with them into the playoffs. Rita, it's been both. You know, to be perfectly honest, it's like the styles of, you know, styles make fights. And the Sacramento style of playing fast and playing faster plays right into the Warriors' hands of not being able to corral a team on the road and establish any type of defensive identity. Remember, you got Andrew Wiggins, Draymond Green, Gary Payton the second on the floor. Three really good defensive players. Most teams don't have that level of depth in terms of defensive personnel, and they're still getting torched. You're putting Andrew Wiggins on De'Aaron Fox, and he's knowing exactly where he wants to get to to get that pull-up shot or to get that step back. They don't have an answer to this point. Now, to your point, will Sacramento be able to maintain that pace on the road? Will they be able to dictate the terms on the road if Steph – and Clay and Jordan Poole. Like I don't know. Have y'all seen Jordan Poole? I feel like he's on like a milk carton. I, uh, he, I, 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 saw, I didn't see him at I all. Saw him, he's like I a, saw him doing his free throw miss dance, his little free throw miss thing last night with some bonuses hey, at the line. I, hey, I saw him for that. Someone's got, look, at a point when you get paid what Jordan Poole has gotten paid, it becomes incumbent upon you. You can't just be the young guy where everything you everything you do is gravy. They're heavily dependent on you to make plays, to play maturely, to play and comport yourself like a champion. Like, we can't treat everybody with the kid gloves anymore. We've said that Jordan Poole's right. the type of player that earns a certain level of contract and that, A, he's got to be protected and promoted and everything else, and he's certainly had the production and the consistency and showing up that, that does it. But you can't go one to seven on the road when your team needs you and you're down one game to nothing. There, you, there needs to be expectations that parallel with the production, that parallel with your paycheck. 100% right. Now, you talked about the defensive players that the Warriors have. They are very good defensive players. Those three that you mentioned, particularly Draymond, we'll come back to him in a second, but they're not necessarily great matchups. It's like I'll use the extreme example. All those years, 
Rudy Gobert was defensive player of the year. Okay, but if you put him in certain situations, that don't mean a damn thing because that's not a good matchup. I, I feel like their matchups are not necessarily great, especially on Fox. Fox is just Fox is just coolly going and he knows where he wants to go. He knows he can get there. And it's just a matter of the shot going in. It's not even a contested shot. Sometimes it's just like, oh, I'm gonna make this or I'm not. But Draymond is different than the other two. Draymond is an elite still defensive player. He's an elite advanced graduate level, maybe even PhD in defense. What did you think of what he did last night? And do you think a suspension is justified for game three? I don't think he'll get suspended for game three. And maybe the ejection is the way to split the baby. Because if he doesn't get thrown out in game two, I think you might wind up going back and re-adjudicating it and saying, okay, you know, you need to sit. I think the flagrant two for that will, will, will suffice, right? Now, the play itself. These athletes are finely tuned machines, right? They, they know how to get their foot in and out of the restricted area, that little bit of strip of white line inside the paint, right? They know how to step exactly right outside of it. And you can't find a way to miss a guy's whole torso? I'm not saying, I'm not saying that Draymond Green, that I, that I wouldn't have the same inclination as Draymond Green if someone grabs my leg. Remember, I'm from Detroit where Ndamukong Su yeah. did the A-Town stomp <laughs> on everybody oh. and everybody whenever yes, he, he had the chance to, like, to extricate it. What did he say? I was trying to extricate myself. That sounds like Draymond Green, except he got caught. And to me, the bigger thing was a couple of plays Ooh. before, he hip-checked Sabonis. They caught a yeah. foul on Draymond. They rescinded it when they looked back at it. And I think at that point, there was no more benefit of the doubt we're looking at both of you guys. I think Good it's point. a little Context. gamesmanship. It's a little bit of gamesmanship in both ways because Sabonis acted like he had gotten the Drew Hill two-step stomp. Tell me what you want. Like he had just had <laughs> Cisco and all of them doing the hop throughout the entire course. And don't get me wrong, Draymond got him, but he acted like a sniper was attached to that foot. So yeah. there's some gamesmanship there. But for Draymond, you've got to exercise better decision-making your team needs you. And because you've done it so many times, sometimes you might tend to think that you can get away with it or your team will write checks that that you or you'll write checks that your team doesn't that your team has to cash. And last night it came back insufficient funds. Yeah, I, I'm with you on that. I think that, you know, I understand Draymond's response to it. And I mentioned in the last segment too, Vince, that I probably would have done the same thing. But ultimately, you do have to have some restraint because it is the playoffs and you don't want to hurt your team by not being available for them if it's not a health reason. And I think that he's just his own enemy at times when it comes to things like these. He just, he just doesn't really know when to just hold them, fold them, you know what I'm saying? And in this case, he was like, well, it happened to me yes in yesterday's game or the last game. It happened to me again, you know. Now, today, I'm not going to be able to find a space outside of his chest to lay in my foot to make a, 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 you know, to say, hey, stop it, you know what I mean? But ultimately, I do think that. I want to switch gears, though, guys, if I can. Um, what do you guys feel about the charging situation that's going on? Because obviously we've seen the injuries to John Moran and, and Giannis over these uh, charges. And so now they're having conversations about penalizing them or, or changing the rules per se. And I'm just curious to know how you guys feel about that. I'm from the old school, right? Like all these games of 150 and 160 points. I don't know if I really like that so much. I'm not saying give me ugly bully ball, but you got to give the defenses a chance here. And for John ja Morant, it was less about running into Anthony Davis than it was you jumping recklessly as hell in the air with no plan. And God forbid, y'all, we question John ja Morant's decision making because we all know that's been pristine throughout the course of the of the oh, past year. Oh, oh, shot! I'm sorry. That I, hey, hey, lies don't care who tell it, and neither do the truth. I yeah. do uh -oh. think you got to give defenses a chance, and you can't put your hands on players. Now, do I think sliding under a guy? You know what I mean, like clipping a guy's legs, like that sort of thing. That's dirty. But in terms of just 
your your job is to impede the progress of someone using right. whatever legal methods and giving sacrificing your body. Look, that's just as tough on the person who's taking the charge as it is the person who's jumping in the air. That's a body contact with no protection. So I do think unless you're going to give the defense some advantage, you can't sit somewhere and take away every uh, mechanism for them to play defense. Yeah, well, that's this, right. I'm not trying to watch I, NBA jam. I agree with you. I agree with you, Vinny. Look, look, like George Carl used to have some crazy ideas, some really crazy ideas. One of them was, I remember him saying back in the day, you know, we should reward more than two points for an uncontested dunk because it's so hard at that time. It's so hard for an NBA player to get an uncontested dunk. You know how hard that is? His point is defense was at a high level and guys really weren't running free. I get it. But the point is, we're so used to the opposite now. We're so used to guys just flying through the lane and getting whatever they want and guys getting dunked on. Sometimes they don't jump, they step out of the way. I like that there is still space for some resistance if you're about it. Now, everybody ain't about it. Then you watch this sport. Some guys are not trying to go in there and take that body contact. They'll flop. But to actually take it where you are rewarded uh, with, with, a, with a charge, a lot of people don't do it. So hey, I like, was, I like was to George, keep that Was place. George on drugs when he, t- when he said that? Uh, you know, <laughs> but probably. Was he on that Don Vinny, Nelson goat weed or something like that when he said that? Listen, he spent a lot of time in places where he did coach in Denver for a while, right? Denver was ahead of the rest of the country when it came to like little cannabis. You know, the rest of us are a little late, but Denver, Boulder, they were far ahead of everybody. Oh, we can go ahead and smoke it. They smoke it outside. Ain't no big deal. <laughs> it's legal. <laughs> like, so probably, let me ask you this. Uh, switching to another series, you mentioned Giannis on, on the, uh, we, he came up on that block charge thing. Giannis goes down in that Miami game. Miami wins it. They're up one zip. Do you think this is a real series or was it just an aberration on Sunday? It's both. It is a real series and it is an aberration because the Miami Heat are not your typical AFC. The problem the Heat have is who's their third best player because Tyler Hero is out for that series with a broken broken hand, broken wrist. And let me tell you, as somebody who has broken his wrist playing basketball, you ain't coming back from that. Ain't a drug, legal or not in the world that's going to bring him back. In this series, he's already been ruled out. Giannis, I think the biggest thing for them will be not necessarily getting out of this series because I don't think the Heat will have enough. It is how much energy they will have to exert to get to the second round where you will play either the bruising New York Knicks or the explosive Cleveland Cavaliers. You need to basically conserve as much energy as you can to get through this. It's not about winning the series to me. It's about getting out of it in five games and six or six games and not playing extra games and getting your rest and being able to recover while some of these other blood baths are going on. And I think Giannis has been battling injuries all year, knees, hand, wrist. Now it's his back. It's just a function of the way that he plays. And that's not going to change. You do worry about a cumulative effect with him because you don't think of him as being an old player. He's not, but he's been in the league decade those things start to take hold and just because lebron is in year 20 don't mean everybody else's body is built for 20 years how about it i agree with that and and flipping to the other side in terms of injury even though paul george has been ruled out for that series against phoenix the clippers came out and won that game in, in game one in Phoenix, and now you have an opportunity if you're Phoenix to try to, you know, even the kill in game two. But do you feel like that that was the same thing in terms of what we just talked about in the last series where, you know, okay, they game one was just what it was, and then Phoenix finds a way to kind of get their feet back in, on the ground? It could be if the Clippers didn't employ a man named Kawhi Leonard. Well, <laughs> you know what true. I mean? Well, that that is a bad boy. Like you literally your hope for Kawhi Leonard is to hope that he missed. You're not taking the ball from him. You're not forcing him into a bad shot. You are only hoping that he misses or that he's having an off night. The best player on the floor can usually get you a game. Are we sure that is Kevin Durant? 
I think oh. it's Kevin Wait Durant. Wait a minute now. I do. Oh. I think it's Kevin Durant. But okay. ask Kawhi Leonard who the best player in that series is. Ask Kawhi That's Leonard me. who can carry a team in this particular situation. And then you look over on the other side, you got Ty Lue, who I think is the best in-game coach in basketball. And then you got Monty Williams, who I think is really good, but I'm not sure if he's at the Ty Lue level. Kevin Durant can't go the last six minutes and take one shot on that team when you and I both can't name the Suns' fourth best player. Valid. Oh, oh I like this was it. The I, like I was intrigued. I was intrigued about this matchup. This is the one that I was and I wanted to see the most because the Phoenix Suns haven't really played together due, you know, injuries and such. So I was concerned about how they would look coming out because I don't know if there's chemistry there. I mean, we know that Booker and Katie like each other, but in terms of like on the court, we just really didn't know what the chemistry was like. So I, this to me was probably one of the matchups that I was interested in the most. You're, you, Rita, you're, you're so there. right. Your point, the, the, the Rita, the point you're that you right made now, about, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm here, game two tonight. Like, like wherever it's it's snowing out here back in the Midwest, it ain't snowing here. <laughs> I just say that it is not snowing here at all. It is eighty something degrees. But to Rita's point, Rita said, "Look, you don't know how KD and Booker and this team that's been put together." handles adversity. Yeah, they've been 8-0 since KD was in the uniform, but they didn't go through real tests. The regular season is supposed to be, supposed to give you a little bit of everything. You're supposed to cruise. You're supposed to have some adversity. You're supposed to hit a little turbulence. This is the first turbulence that this team has hit since they've gotten together. And I was here for the Phoenix Suns last playoff game last year where they got beat by 30 in a game seven. I still think there's some scar tissue for this franchise, and they better get their mm. SHIT in order tonight. Oh, you, 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 you might as well say it. You just spelled it out. You ain't saying <laughs> ish or there. You know what? You just go That's ahead true. and spell it. So you might as well. I got a four year old nephew. I'm used to spelling stuff out as opposed to saying it. My bad. And, and, you know, and now he'll be like, okay, I got it. I, oh, you think you thought I was going to stay four forever? You thought I couldn't spell? Uncle Vinny? Is that what he called you? Uncle Vinny? Uncle Vincent? What he call you? Uncle V? Uncle 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 Vinny. That's that's the that's Vinny. the word. That's what you are uh, now, Uncle Vinny. Well when you come back, <laughs> when you come back from the desert, he's gonna be spelling and you're gonna have to deal with his parents because he's gonna be cussing too. Okay, so <laughs> hey, that ain't that's my Uncle kid. Vinny's fault. He said, I <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> see, see, that's what uncles do. Uncles and aunties do that stuff. Drop in and drop out. <laughs> All right, Vinny. See you. Appreciate y'all. Hey, thank you for watching Brother From Another. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, go ahead and do that now. Don't forget, you can catch us three to four weekdays on PeacockTV.com and on Sirius XM Channel 85.